So with this whole COVID-19 mess going on, I've had just a little bit of extra free time on my hands. And um, so I've been, I've been trying to get caught up on um, old content just to, just to get it out there, just because it's, it's the stories that I want to share. But I've had just a little bit extra time to try and get caught up. So that's kind of what we're doing. This video is actually back it's on that URA trip, but that was like the first trip I had. The the new Forerunner whole camping system just, I totally had it completely dialed in. I totally had it completely dialed in. I don't know that it was my first trip without the trailer. I'd done a trip without the trailer before, but I just sold the trailer in, um, earlier that month. And or maybe it was the end of July. I think it was early in August. And I had kind of like the forerunners already kitted out, right? I mean, I had drawers and I had storage and all this other stuff. But I had to like kind of tweak and reconfigure some stuff because I had a lot of stuff that I still needed to bring with me, even though I was downsizing and minimizing quite a bit, if that makes sense. And so anyway, this is the video of showing you the entire complete, uh, you know, setup that I had in the Forerunner, and I, I was actually really happy with it, super dialed in. I, I'm actually anxious to get the, the RAM dialed in this much. Um, but uh, yeah, so there, if there's any confusion, this is like back in August of 2019. What is going on, my friends? Hey, I'm Jason, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm also known as Mr. Swell Runner, apparently, because whenever people see me on the trail, they say, Mr. Swell Runner. So if you do see me on the trail, it's okay if you call me that, but my name is actually Jason Kirji, also known as Mr. Swell Runner. Make sure you vent your packs. Could be a problem if you don't. They're kind of puffy right now. We'll keep venting them as we go up the mountain. Um, I'm actually in the same spot that I did the intro for the Ophir, Ophir, Ophir Trail, Pass, Ophir Pass Trail. Anyway, I wanted to take just a second, actually more than a second, maybe like a few hundred seconds, but I wanted to show you, you see, for the last couple of years I've been going, I've been camping without a trailer, and now, or with a trailer, I'm sorry, um, now I'm camping without a trailer. And I've gotten, I've had a lot of questions on like what my organization setup and all that stuff is, and I'm by no means an expert at this, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. And actually the last couple days has been really nice because I've got a lot of things I'm gonna tweak, but this is how, this is how we have it right now. And there's a ton of mosquitoes out here. I've been spraying bug spray and they got my thermocell, thermocell thing going. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got the back of the, uh, of the rig, got the back of the Forerunner opened up and um, you can see here, I've got these two ARB storage boxes. I've had those for a couple of years now. Got them in summer 2016, maybe late fall 2016. And you know what, they have been, they've been just fine. Uh, I don't love them, um, but I don't, I don't hate them either. You know, this one, uh, when opening it up, it used to have a catch um, that would keep it open. It doesn't catch anymore. I'm sure it's a simple fix, but it doesn't work anymore. This is just a regular old drawer. They've got a little thing right here that slides out for a table. Um, I was thinking about adding that. If I don't redo the storage back here, I'm thinking about redoing the storage too. Uh, and then this thing right here, this is a roller floor. So you can see here, I can pull that lever right there and the whole fridge slides out, kind of like magic. Actually, the only way I can get access to the fridge is by doing just that. Um, otherwise, I can't get into the fridge. Um, I'm going to push this guy has got a catch so it will stay out for you and then this has got a uh, a little drawer down in here the thoughts behind doing this drawer setup uh, in the beginning was primarily because I didn't want the fridge to be up super high uh, if I had a chance to do it over again I would definitely do two of the larger drawers here and just put the fridge up high either on a roller floor uh, on the larger drawer or put it on some sort of drop um, Primarily because the fridge is already kind of high, so it's already a little bit difficult to get to. Um, the kids already have to climb up to, to get to it, so a drop slide would work probably better anyway. And I'm about to show you why I would rather have two of these drawers anyway. But anyway, so this is, uh, this is what we got. So inside here, keep flashlights, uh, mostly, you know. Got uh, medicine here, got a torque wrench here. 
I keep that handy because if I do need to change a tire, I'd, prop, I'd rather have it properly torqued. Um, inside here I've got, well, see, so I've got my, my Goal Zero crush lights. I love these things, by the way. They're awesome. I like, honestly don't know how I could ever survive without them. They're amazing because they're, I you mean, know, look, you can fit them in here and they just, they're great. I've got uh, a voltmeter in here, some other tools, storage, stuff like that. I've got backup deflator thingamajigger in here, plus some other air stuff and, uh, you know, precision screwdriver set. And then I've got a uh, really small first aid kit back there and some more hardware. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what I keep in here. Over in this drawer, this is where I keep a ton of other stuff, okay? So firstly, let me address these boxes right here. These boxes, this is why I would um, like to have another one of these drawers because this drawer, you can see, it's pretty back in there. I mean, it's pretty big and it goes way back in there. Focus on what I want and you can see this is my tool bag and it's the same size as this bag so you can see like about how deep it goes you know what i mean and so i've got stay i'm getting ahead of myself let me talk about the box if i was like a cook you know like if i loved preparing meals the trailer was incredible okay one of the reasons why i went with the trailer in the first place is because i really like the idea of being able to leave it packed and just hook it up and go and that's essentially what i did and i had stuff in the trailer that i would leave in the trailer all the time and it was it was really really great for that but trailing for two and a half years i was just looking at it and it's just there's so much stuff in there that i really never used i really didn't need and it was really interesting because back in april when i went to moab you watched that video a few back uh, I really had to pare things down and like think about what I actually needed in order to go on this trip with my oldest son and his cousin Wesley. And it basically came down to this box right here. It's front runner box. By the way, these front runner boxes are like the best boxes in the business, right? There's other boxes that are probably technically better, but they're like probably five times as much, right? These boxes, they're cheap. They're like pretty much i mean you could stand on them you could throw them around you can attach them to your roof they're pretty much waterproof even though they'll tell you they're not really i had some on my roof for years never got water in them i mean running through running car washes and all kinds of st they're great boxes that's what i'm trying to say i got the extended lid on here and i basically inside that box i've got oatmeal i've got paper plates paper towels i've got dinner items um things that i'm going to pack uh, I mean, that's, it's like my pantry. It's like the whole pantry, everything that I could possibly need in here. The only downside is I do need to kind of keep that box a little bit stocked because like we eat oatmeal and ramen noodles and like whatever it is we eat. Um, I can overlay some B-roll of me shooting footage. I'm not gonna undo the box right now, but I'll shoot some footage of what's in the box in a little bit later. Um, and then the box down below it, I've got clothes and stuff like that in there. The contents of this box right here, I could easily fit in one of these, in another one of these drawers. Actually, I could fit the contents of that box in one of these drawers. Pro actually, I could probably fit the contents of both boxes inside this drawer if I really wanted to, in one of these drawers. And so that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. Like I, I, there's a constant question in my head on whether or not I'm keeping the Forerunner because it's been a few years and I'm getting the itch for something new, <sighs> but this thing just works. I mean, it just works and I still love it, right? So maybe I just ought to redo the storage and call it a day. So yeah, that's what's in the boxes. This right here is a five gallon water jug. There can't be five gallons in there, maybe three. I'm not really sure exactly the capacity, but this is from Hydro Blue. One of the things I like about it is it has a spigot on this side. You can uh, open and close it. And then you've got a pump over here. And then inside here, it also has a filter. So you can filter out, it's like the same kind of like filter you'd use it like with like a life straw, right? You can filter out like 99.9% .9 of like all dangerous things that you would usually find in like a regular river, you know, mountain stream or whatever. Um, use caution, don't take my word for what that filters out by the way, make sure you do your own research. But I'm not really using it for that. I'm mostly using it for water storage and for like a pump spigot. Um, works okay, I'm not sure if I broke it or if I did something to it, but it doesn't, quite work the way I want it to. So I'm, I'm in the, this is like the second time I've used it. So I'm, I'm in the middle of figuring that out. Okay. One of the other things I had to figure out was 
where in the heck am I gonna keep my chairs? These front runner chairs, they were a big pain in the butt for me to try and figure out where I was gonna keep. I don't love what I'm doing here. I've been thinking about tweaking some things to make some other things kind of work. But you know, at the end of the day, this, this, kind of, this kind of works. I was thinking about putting a hook up in here. Let me show you. I was gonna put a hook here and hook the chairs to it. Um, but that, I just really didn't have enough space. And so what I ended up doing is I've got, uh, I've got a chair kind of just resting on this ledge down here, right down here. And then I've got this chair resting right there. And then I've got this one kind of resting right there. And you know what? It kind of works, right? Okay, so I've got this chair here. I've got a bungee. Basically, I've got this bungee wrapped around and it's uh, attached to the straps that are holding that are holding the fridge down. And it's basically just wrapped around and it holds the chair on the side here, holds this chair on the back here. And it's kind of like fine. It kind of just works just fine. Uh, I've got, I think I am gonna leave the chairs like this because it really is, they're totally out of the way. Um, but what I was thinking that I'm gonna redo is this is the Morflate, my off-road radio inflator deflator kit thingy. And um, I, I'm trying to decide if I absolutely love this thing or just kind of just like it, right? I don't hate it. I think it's great. Um, I'm just getting used to like winding everything back up and putting it all back again. But it's like, I still have to do that with other hoses. And I have to run all the way around the vehicle and like bend over and kneel down or sit on something when I'm inflating. This, I can just hook it up all around and I can basically maintain it right there at the front of the vehicle wherever I'm airing up. And so I kind of do love that, even if it takes another couple of minutes to do everything because I'm not like hunched over and like, uh, I'm airing up, yeah. It kind of works, right? So this goes right here. One of the things I'm getting ready to change is there's a company, I don't remember what they're called right now, um, but probably as I'm editing this, it's probably already been done, but they make all kinds of storage solutions like nets and gear and pouches and all kinds of stuff for all kinds of different vehicles, um, but they also make them for the fifth gen 4Runner. And they've got uh, a mesh thing that attaches up here to the tailgate thing, and it's like a pocket. And so I will keep that inside there and utilize this for some storage space as well. So I'm actually pretty stoked about that. So yeah, uh, I also get asked this a lot. What are these, what are these things over here? Let me crank this, let me crank this up. What are those, what are those metal, metal things right there? Your mom. So I've actually, they're not my mom, they're your mom. No, I'm just kidding. Your dad. Was, edit that out. Okay, so these things are from these particular ones are from Orange Box Fabrication. They sent them to me. They didn't send them to me. I bought these a long time ago. Uh, Rego Fabrication makes some. Most of the guys that are like fabricating like metal stuff and brackets and all that stuff, they've got these. Uh, the idea and concept behind it is to give yourself uh, some usable storage over those rear quarter panel windows that are basically just aesthetics. I mean, I wouldn't want to have... I like having the windows there, but that space is totally... This makes that space useful. That's what I'm trying to say. Those things have been relatively underutilized for the entire time I've had my vehicle, but I'm using them now. And actually I've got a couple of other ideas for what I can do to kind of tweak some things and make them even more usable now that I'm trying to fit everything in the vehicle. I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's like I had a lot of stuff in the trailer, but it's like, if you kind of like think about it and you're a little smart about how you do it, I've got plenty of room to do I've got plenty of room to, to store stuff here. You know, like I just was tightening a shackle because those guys come loose as I'm bumping down the trail. But that's like the thing. It's like people say, don't keep the shackles on the outside of the vehicle. People even just steal them. Yeah, I bought cheap shackles, inexpensive shackles, but they're like weight rated for the correct, like whatever. And I literally just leave them on the outside of the vehicle. If you come by my vehicle and you steal them, shame on you. You're a scumbag. But otherwise, I mean, it's like nobody's ever stolen them and I'm utilizing the exterior storage I have. Okay, over to the other side. So on the other side, I've got another one of those panels you can see here. And um, I basically, what I'm doing here is I've got my backpack with my laptop just your over there laptop? and the bungee's holding it in. What? I said your mom's laptop. <laughs> the bungee's holding it in. I've got a carabiner clip up there, hold it up. And that just kind of works. It's okay. Uh, I don't take my laptop with me on every trip, but I do on your some trips. Your mom just called there's a space right here that's like totally underutilized down in here, but I'm not using it for anything. And then these are my goal zero lights. We're going to get to the goal zero in a second. 
and I've got more of them right here and I just kind of, when I'm on a trip, I just kind of like leave them undone. And then these things are awesome because they're magnetized and I literally don't do anything other than boop, and it like stays there. It's crazy how well they just like stay up there and don't fall. I mean, when I'm like at camp. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, leave that one right there plugged in and ran up uh, when I'm on a trip. Um, and then I'll just leave these down in here like this. And then that way when I get to camp at night, I can just plug those up, boop, boop. And then put another one over here on the underside of the tent right there. So we have lighting. Oh, and uh, this is something else I'm really proud of. Uh, Blue, Ridge, Blue Ridge Overland Gear makes, I think, some of the best handcrafted stuff out there. I just love it. I just love their stuff. I love that they make it by hand and it's like super great. This is their giant trash bag. I, uh, you know, it's their, let's, let's, I've gone through several trash -aroos and I just get tired of them breaking. They're cheap, but they break and it's annoying. So I guess we'll see how long this lasts, but those guys at Brog, they, I mean, they, they make it really tough and they use their stuff. So I'm sure it'll last a long time. Okay, so over to the inside here. Hey. Hey, Vizos. All right, let me fix my exposure here. Hi, Al Kaiba. And we got Ben's pink blanket he likes to snuggle with Wait, when he's no. missing his mommy. Yeah, Ben, you like here. to snuggle with when you miss your mommy, don't Take you? Take that for just a second, okay? No. All right, so here I have actually removed the seat here. Uh, and the Where reason the being for this is because, well, this gives me a platform by which I can like mount stuff too, right? And I basically just use the factory the bolts. the bed bugs start to bite. So I've got two factory mounts here, uh, you know, where the bottom of the seat goes and I just use those bolts and some hook eye things you can kind of see right down there. And, and then I've got the Goal Zero Yeti 1400, is it? Yeah, 1400 uh, mounted there. Uh, if I were to redo my storage, to be honest with you, Goose Goose got some of the best stuff in the biz and they actually make a full setup for removing the seat, seat delete stuff and all that. And I'd probably do their system because just like Blue Ridge Overland Gear, those guys know how to make their stuff. From what I've heard, I mean, I've never used their stuff, but everybody I know that's used Goose Gear stuff, it's been good stuff. That's top for another day. So what I'm doing here, like I said, is I've got the Yeti 1400 there. And I use the Yeti 1400. This is my um, my Wii Boost right here. I've got that mounted on uh, just some Velcro that I stuck. It's doing that because it's got like a signal reception problem. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I haven't had it very long. Maybe it's working now. Uh, I just stuck a bunch of hook and loop soft side here, just like up here on these things so that I can just Velcro stuff to it. Overland Dad, by the way, representing. Corey. And so I use my Yeti to Mom's Yeti. basically, so this is the cable for, <laughs> for the light that's in the back that we just talked about. I charge all kinds of stuff here. So I use this for the GoPro right here, Apple Watch charger, and then maybe an iPad or something. And then I use this to charge up my camera batteries. I know there's other ways to do this, but I'm telling you, these expensive in-series Canon batteries, they are really, really good. But I feel like some of these other cheap 12-volt charger things on the market kind of chew through them, and I don't want them to get messed up because I like them. And so that's, that's what I've kind of been doing. And if I need to charge anything overnight, this is what I'm using. Uh, and then this is hooked up via the Yeti link. I've got a whole video on that. You'll have to look at that uh, on your own. I still don't have an onboard compressor. So there's my compressor box right there. It's an ARB single. And, um, and then I've got my camera bag here and I keep everything there just like that. Drone, lenses, other camera body, this is all that stuff. Shotgun. Uh, I haven't addressed the old, whole onboard air thing because I kind of put a second dual battery where the many people put uh, the compressor and I've got a power tray. It's a long story. I'm working on it. Uh, I've also got a, a power tank, which I'm also kind of working on that too. 
Um, and um, I'm gonna actually mount the power tank here in probably in place of the gas, or maybe I'll find another way to run one tank of gas or, or jug or whatever you call them. I guess you can see how I've got these things strapped down. I've got the front runner, ratchet straps. Uh, these things are awesome. And I basically have them hooked to D-rings on the other side as well. And uh, that way I can keep those things uh, bolted down and in place. Oh yeah, I have this like constant desire to like know what the temperature is. So I mounted that there so I can kind of see what the temperature is at all times. So yeah, that pretty much, that pretty much does it. Hope you really enjoyed this tour of my like new camping setup. Um, this is gonna evolve, obviously, right? And as I tweak it and it evolves and all this stuff, I'll, I'll let you know the details and kind of keep you in the loop. Maybe we'll do another brief walk around to some of this stuff in a few months. With that said, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're subscribed. Hope you liked this video. And if you do, make sure you hit the like button. And if you don't, don't even hit the dislike oh button because that's just rude. I mean, who does that, right? Make sure you share it with your friends and we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Yeah.